Good morning, you're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. Well, as the weather is getting hotter, so is the harness racing action. We've got some exciting, big money, big thrill races to show you from Pocono Downs this week, plus a whole lot more. Take a look at what you can expect to see in this next half hour. It was an all-star week here at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. We'll show you all of the excitement. We'll take you to the Meadowlands for the eliminations for tonight's prestigious Meadowlands pace and all talk with one of the newest hardest racing Hall of Famers. It's racing's fastest paced half hour and it all starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Kim Asabi and welcome to PA Harness Week. And before we kick off the show, a special hi, how are you? And what's going down to Peter McCann, who had some great words to say about the show and Heather and I, and we appreciate that. And he's obviously a man of rare grace and class and skill and intelligence, right? <laughs> yeah. You agree? What a guy. All of our fans are. A absolutely. Heather, when I say the name Dave Miller, what comes to mind? Amazing harness driver. Um, purple and white colors. I love that combination. Uh, I don't know. My purple goodness. Purple Jesus. Uh, purple Jesus. Right. Little brown jug. Buckeye. Some yeah. people actually pray to David Miller in the Buckeye State. Did you know that? Oh, no. They really do. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let, let me tell you this. Either that or they think of his many brothers from the, the biggest family in all of harness racing. I mean, there's, there's David, there's Andy, there's Brett. Marcus, Irv, there's Arthur, uh, Mitch, uh, there's Barney Miller, and uh, Michael Chance, of course, whose real name is Mike Miller. Uh, you, you, what you said was completely off. Like, that was a total lie. Like, you don't even know what you're talking about. Well, Michael Chance? Or if that's so, <laughs> let me just say this. He's a great harness driver. He's steady, not flashy, but he is dependable, and he's won over 11,000 harness races. And our Charlotte McBride caught up with him to find out what it was like to be inducted into Harness Racing's vaunted Hall of Fame. All right, thanks, guys. I'm now here with Hall of Fame driver David Miller. This past weekend, you were inducted into the Harness Racing Hall of Fame. What was that experience like? Um, it, it was a great experience. Uh, I, I feel it's the biggest honor that you can receive as a uh, as a harness driver. You're up there with your friends, your family. I'm sure they're all there to support you. Emotional a little bit, getting this honor? Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely fighting back a lot of tears, you know. Uh, it's just talking about my family and how I got started and, you know, how they've stuck with me through the years, you know. It's, it's, it's very emotional and, uh, uh, you know, I know they're very proud of me and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great, great feeling. And for those that don't know, 11,000 wins, 14 Breeders' Crown victories, 2003 Driver of the Year, three Little Brown Jugs. You have a million accolades, it seems like. Are there any that really stand out in your mind? Uh, yeah, um, no pain intended. He, he won the Triple Crown, and I know that's, uh, that's a very hard thing to do, uh, and he was tough enough to do it. And, uh, you know, my first Breeders' Crown, and... Uh, uh, winning my first jug, you know, those races there, they uh, they stick with you. Now, there's one thing you haven't done. You haven't won the Hamiltonian. Can we see a Hambo win out of you? It, yeah, I, I really feel it's it's going to be my turn one of these days. I'm getting closer and closer, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to hang in there until it happens. All right. Well, congratulations, and we wish you the best of luck in the future. Well, thank you so much. Back to you guys. Thanks, Charlotte, and congratulations to you, Dave Miller, one of our sports great guys, and he is just, I'm just thrilled for him, aren't you? Yeah, we should also mention that Bill Weaver also got inducted inducted into the Living Hall of Fame, and in the communications corner, it was John Pavlik and Carol Kramer, so congratulations None to None of those them. people sounded like you or me. <laughs> I just thought I'd point that out, you know? <laughs> All right, let's go to the action, shall we? At Pocono, they had many Pennsylvania all-star races. I'm talking about many, many. We're going to cover it for you. And Heather's got the first. Uh, we are. Okay, there was five divisions uh, for the two-year-old trotting colts on this evening, but we're going to check out race number eight from this night. The entire field, by the way, making their pair mutual debut. So I thought that was, uh, yes. yeah, very interesting. Uh, there's a Centurion ATM. He is way inside post one. Swedish trainer, Oxenstead. Mm. Now, then there's a way outside post eight. The bank is 
is the name of this horse for Swedish trainer Jimmy Tactor. Centurion ATM still hangs on to a little more than a length. Here comes the bank out for more. Second and quickly on the move at the leader. At the rail, explosive dream, Lehigh legend, and uh, they'd swing home and drive for the wire. Centurion ATM at the rail, hanging in there over the bank. Second, they'll come for the wire together. Centurion ATM and the bank to win it all. Out of the five young all-star trots this evening, this one was actually the fastest. There were a couple of lead changes here. The bank is the winner, and he wins by 156 and three for trainer driver Jimmy Tactor. Oh my goodness, we're just talking about David Miller. Jimmy Tactor, another Hall of Famer. He just got inducted last year. The favorite was Centurium ATM. Uh, certainly not a shabby performance for him. He just got nabbed though in the final stride. It, this was kind of a no-brainer. I never noticed these things, but the exacta, did you see that? The bank is first, ATM is second. Yes. Right, yeah. Very short price, but as they say, better than a long face, right? Absolutely. I want to mention one thing too. Heather is going to be part of a major network broadcast coming up. Wow, is it tonight? Well, Heather. Heather, oh, you. Heather. You, the one <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, tell us all about that. Yeah, CBS Sports Network at 9 p.m. We are having an amazing one-hour show, and the centerpiece is the... You. What? You. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say the Meadowlands pace, but yeah, we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, it should be an absolutely off the hoof, as we like to say, uh, telecast. I'm really excited about it. And it's live, so anything can happen. Mm, live TV, the yeah. best. Okay. Stick around when we come back. We're going to have more Pennsylvania All-Star races from Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. Don't go away. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Welcome back to PA Harness Week, along with Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross, and we go to Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, as promised, another Pennsylvania All-Stars race. Three-year-old Colt and Gilding Pacers. Number seven, Matt American with George Knapp was three to five. Number two, the Lunch Pail, two to one with Andrew McCarthy. Number six, Work and Play Hard with Mike Simons is eight to one third choice. And with a call, Jim Bavilia. Matt American stretches his lead out now to about uh, length and three quarters as George Knapp uh, picking up the pace just a bit there. The lunch pail hard pressed to stay close now on the inside. Caviar Luca also saving ground. Still nobody really trying on the outside uh, close to the lead. Don't mess with the best fourth and uh, Barbarian. Work and play hard moves into sixth on the outside and eight plus Hanover still trails. Three quarters, 121 and 2, 26 and 2. Hung up on the back stretch by Matt American. His lead down to two as McCarthy now now urging on the lunch pail is getting a little bit closer further back to caviar luca third top of the stretch mad american still by about a length and three quarters the lunch pail parked mad american to the quarter in 26 and three before the chalk cleared from there mad american was whistling dixie or perhaps america the beautiful beating the lunch pail by a length of 149 and four number one don't mess with the best 16 to one with mark mcdonald got third okay now i'm going to show you the three-year-old Facing Phillies and again Pennsylvania All Stars here. Number six is Fancy Desire, heavy betters choice. She just won the Lynch final right here at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs in her most recent start. And then number five is Cinnamony. Uh, she had throat surgery as a two year old, didn't know how she would do, but she has been amazing as a three year old. The rest of the field double digits. Fancy Desire, fresh off the win in the Lynch last time out. And George Napolitano Jr. has her where she likes to operate on the front end. She she is the one to nine favorite now. A length and a quarter back to Cinnamony, also from that uh, Lynch final. Two back there, third, that woman, Hannah.
Hanover. Another slight gap to Palm Beach fourth. Then comes Some Island somewhere. It's Hunger Games sixth around the turn, followed at the end by Stuck Like Lou and up front Bad Girl. No movement there on the front stretch as they hit the half 55 and four, 28 and one second panel. Comparable to what Fancy Desire uh, put up on the board in her win last week. And she leads here unhurried by George Knapp. Cinemony is hanging with her in the pocket and two back there to that woman Hanover who starts the game for Mike Wilder. Now right up behind her cover. Palm Beach is fourth on the inside. On the outside now a strong move from Hunger Games with Jeff Gregory and Stuck Like Lou follows that live cover. The back some island somewhere and up front bad girl. Three quarters, 123 and three, 27 and four third panel. Still not too taxing here for Fancy Desire. She's up by a length and a half over Cinemony. That woman Hanover is stalled on the outside third and then it's uh, Palm Beach fourth. Top of the stretch. Fancy Desire by a length and a half. Cinemony out of the pocket trying to catch up. It's Fancy Desire. Cinemony all out starts the game. Fancy Desire looking for the line. Fancy Desire. Fancy Desire absolutely loves this track. Uh, last week in the Lynch final. Victory lane this week. All stars victory lane and she doesn't work on the front and won 50 and 4. And came right down to the wire. Cinemony got a great trip. She was right there. Only a neck back. Hunger Games was third. George Napolitano Jr. Your winning driver and your winning trainer is Kevin Clark. The very next race. Race 8 at Morgan Sun of Pocono Downs. 30,400 bucks on the line. Pennsylvania All-Star Pace. Number 2 King of the Jungle with Jim Morrill Jr. The 6 to 5 chalk. Number 7 somewhere in LA, two to one with Dan Rawlings, number eight, some player with Georgie Knapp, and number one, some size, some style with Matt Kikaley for both five to one third choices. King of the Jungle going to pull the pocket here, the six to five favorite, coming off a third in the uh, Hemska uh, Consolation, takes over for Morrill at three eighths. Now on the outside, somewhere in LA, comes up to challenge. This one in from the big M, some size, some style behind that. Best said is in the pocket fourth, and third over now comes a Maxi Bond, Sean Liam Q sixth and some play a gapped out a bit at the end half is 55 and 1 28 and 4 second panel king of the jungle holding off somewhere in la for the moment that one is about three parts of a length back on the outside for rawlings and still applying pressure to the leader best said it was used hard early now getting a breather in the pocket some size some style second over in good striking position only two away sean liam q is fifth about three and a half back but uh, no direction home for him third over six there is maxi bond and some play still trails three quarters 122 and one much faster on the back there 27 even king of the jungle and somewhere in la are now just about on even terms some size some style up three wide best said still in the pocket top of the stretch king of the jungle loses the lead now to somewhere in la on the inside best said coming up and now from far back sean liam q between horses sean liam q a daredevil ride for andrew mccarthy well heather very adroitly pointed out there was a lot of sums of horses in that race. Some wear in LA, some player, some size, some style, yada, yada, yada. But none of the sums got none. That's right. The winner was, you ready for this? The first four were separated by four schnozolas. Number four, Sean Liam. Ah, Faith and Big R and Erin Gobrales. A 16 to one shot when Andrew McCarthy got the money. Nosed out some player who nosed out number six, Maxi Bond. A 14 to one shot with Mark McDonald who knows somewhere in LA, the time of the mile, 150 and two. Okay, now I've got more Pennsylvania All-Stars. How about that, the three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. Number five is at press time. He just finished second in the $500,000 hemp final. And um, he's also also won this season in 148 and 2. He is the overwhelming, you're going to get five cents on the dollar, <laughs> heavy, heavy favorite, and the rest super mega long shots. At press time, of course, coming off the near miss in the hemp last time out, a huge favor to one to nine. He's got Bristol Bay parked on his outside here for George Knapp. About a length and a half back to Avalanche Hanover third. Two more back to Brioni, who comes in with four consecutive wins. And it's pumped up, kicks fifth. The gap to Jin Shark and Verbal Assault trails. He's about six and a half off the lead. And still at press time has the lead, although Bristol Bay trying to hound him on the outside. The half reached in 54 and three, 27 and three. Second 
second panel. So the fractions are very quick here, but at press time did dispose of the challenge of Bristol Bay, who's now backing off on the outside. Inside, good trip for Avalanche Hanover, right in behind the leader there. Brioni is third now, while on the outside, Bristol Bay, give him credit, he's coming on again for George Knapp. Behind him, Jin's Shark, then at the back there, pumped up kicks and verbal assault. But still at press time, leads the way, three quarters, 123 even, 28 and two, third panel. At press time by about a length and a half now over Avalanche Hanover. Bristol Bay just hanging out there now a bit weary. Brioni and Jin Shark trying to come on. Top of the stretch at press time. Now stretches it out to about four lengths there. Avalanche Hanover lost touch with the leader there just a few steps into the stretch. And at press time pouring it on like a one to nine should. So there wasn't a bunch of gamblers like cursing the gods up there, the betting gods, right? And, and nobody was yelling profanities at Matt Kakaley either, no. right? Yes. <laughs> because the horse wins like an over-the-top favorite should uh, by four and a half lengths, leading the way in 150 and one. Brioni was second, and Avalanche Hanover was third. Did you say Brioni? Brioni. Like macaroni? Yeah, yeah like uh, bologna. Well, that sounds good. When we come back, we'll have more from Pocono action of plenty, and right here at Harris, Philadelphia, don't you dare go anywhere. Feel the action. Get a taste of victory. Spice things up. And play to win. Mohegan Sun, off track wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. back this edition of PA Harness Week with the lovely Heather Vitale and I'm Steve Ross and his promise going back to Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs for race 11 on Saturday another Pennsylvania All-Stars race for pacing Phillies number five take that hat over with Tyler Buter was a three to five chalk number four Tyra who's had a big year already winning the Willismore at at Yonkers and also won the Lynch Consolation last week and was three to two with Victor Kirby this time instead of Tim Dietrich number six beach body that's right beach body can you dig it with georgie knapp was six to one and here's the goal take that hand over the one bearing that burden at the moment inside tyra is right tight behind the leader then you've got marathon day third real drama going to attempt first over there and actually going to get some cover from marathon day caviar Shelley able to slide up the inside big gap back to beach body and fits well both of whom are uh, not threatening at all it's getting tight up front though for take that hand over three quarters 122 and 327 and four third panel as marathon day now even with the leader on the outside take that hand over trying to fight back tyra is ready to pounce third further back to real drama fourth top of the stretch and still it's take that hand over inside here comes tyra up the passing lane outside marathon day marathon day take that hand over take that hand over well tyra cut a snappy 26 and four opening split before take that hand over said take that tyra and went by from there take that hand over held on to win by a neck and won 49 to four over the fast closing number two marathon day off a of 24 to one with anthony napolitano jr tyra settled for third sorry <laughs> i'm just waiting for you to like start screaming take that in there. okay so, no, <laughs> uh, so in this race something very interesting happened actually it could have been dangerous but our quick leveled headed drivers right to control this about the three-quarter pole you can see the right line of Tyler Buter's horse take that head over <laughs> right that line ends up breaking and so still she ends up winning it's amazing so kudos just there's no millers in the in the bike right no 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 but you know what i was just thinking just goes to show you do we really need harness drivers in the business right she just went on her own <laughs> but what's really cool is also right after they cross the wire anthony napolitano goes around take that hand over his head grabs her by the bridle and everybody goes to safety so yeah uh, nice very very nice good thinking um good stuff yeah 
Ooh. I get to talk some more, don't I? Yay! Okay, uh, we're, we're headed to Harris, Philadelphia now. I've got the winners over Lady Pacers. Post positions assigned in this one. So the multi-award winning Andrevet, she gets the eight hole in here and she's the favorite at four to five. But the second choice is Camille. Um, she's got the number five hole. Only just about a month ago, she tied the track record for pacing mares at Sayota. So uh, she's certainly not chopped liver. Camille leads it by three parts outside. Androbet driving up now to challenge. Inside Fast and Feisty racing in third. Outside Regal Electra second up three lengths away from the lead. Wrapped in fifth in it to win a fortune with excess cover. Coffee Addict outside seventh. Lightning Page the trailer is Simple Saber. And Camille opens up the lead by three as they go around the turn. Camille gets three quarters at 122 and one and leads it by four lengths now. Androbet back to second. Inside Fast Fast and feisty third. Coming three wide is Coffee Addict. In between us is Regal Electra. They straighten the way, but Camille is drawing away. Camille opens up by seven lengths now. Androbet is second. Up the inside, Fast and Feisty. Far outside, Coffee Addict. Rugby Grum for second, but no doubt about the win. Camille. Fast and feisty. She leaves out of the gate the fastest. Camille, she stepped out really fast, too. She gets to the front about the time they get past the quarter pole. The rich and famous Androvet comes first up. Raced really tough, but Camille, just to pace delicious here, she wins by count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lengths. Yes. No, she she's not chopped liver. You said she wasn't chopped liver. I showed that in 149 and three, by the way. Fast and feisty second. Androvet finished third. I was very surprised. I think Androvet just had a really tough mile. Yeah, she just was raced outside the Always hall. amazing, Park though. for her yeah. lungs, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Stick around when we come back. We're not done. We're going up to the Big M. Why? We're going to have the limbs of the Meadowlands pace. You will not want to miss any of this action. Go away. JK, end of an era. A rally coming from Always Bay Mickey and Dave Miller. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, changing lives since 1976 by providing unforgettable experiences while educating young racing fans. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, hands-on equine learning at camps across the country and driving exhibitions. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, providing scholarships, leadership programs, career and college information. Support the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Log on to hhyf.org and find us on Facebook. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, growing our future with enthusiasm. you and welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather, I'm Steve, and we always deliver on our PA Harness Week promises, don't we, Heather? Absolutely, always. 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 And we never lie except when it's convenient. Or when you say Michael Chance is David Miller's brother. He wasn't? Whatever. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. The Meadowlands Pace of Limbs. The first one, it was race six, and number six, JK, end of an era with Brian Sears, the on Odds on choice, rather, two to five is what he was trying to say. Number one, Limelight Beach with John Campbell. Number eight, Lions Somewhere with Yannick Shingra. And number three, Duwap Hanover with Corey Callahan. We're all seven to one shots. Here's the call. It Sears gives the cue to J.K. End of an era. There he goes, launching his bid for third, second, and gaining and looking for the lead. Duwap Hanover tightens in a bit there in fifth. Tracked by Somewhere Fancy to the outside. Always B. Mickey gets underway. After the miscue, unlocked is the trailer. At the half, J.K., end of an era, the heavy favorite with Sears, clears in 54 and two-fifths. So it's J.K., end of an era, the big favorite, has the lead. Took the lead away from Lyon somewhere second. And coming first over to Surge, here comes Duwap Hanover, was fourth, third on the outside, about to be second, tracked intently by Always Be Mickey. Always Be Mickey, stride for stride with Limelight Beach. He's now hemmed in fifth at three quarters. Then comes National Dead on the inside, sixth and somewhere fancy, and unlocked. They're over at three quarters. J.K. End of an era. Duwa Penover on the outside, breathing down his neck. Lion somewhere needs room out of the pocket. 121 and three for three quarters. 27 and one there. And they come after. J.K. End of an era. A rally coming from Always Be Mickey and Dave Miller. And trying to squeeze through his Lion somewhere in deep stretch. All out is J.K. End of an era. J.K. End of an era. Lion somewhere. Surging Always Be Mickey. J.K. End of an era holds on. 
JK, end of an era, was a dead game winner in 148-2, beating back a slew of challengers, including number seven, Always Be Mickey, off at 9-1 to one with Dave Miller and Nick, and Lions somewhere who finished third. Okay, there is another pace elimination. The very next race, as a matter of fact, number seven is Tell It Like It Is. He's a favorite coming off a second place finish in the Million Dollar North America Cup. Number nine is he's watching. He was voted the best two-year-old in the entire country last season. Number five is Left Be With You. He's actually our two-year-old Breeders' Crown champ from 2013. Tell It Like It Is, a wrestled control. Tyler Smith aggressive with Let's Drink On It. Here comes Let's Drink On It, surging and going for the lead to take it away from Tell It Like It Is in the backstretch. Luck be with you now back to third. As sometimes said, tracks from fourth. He's watching an anxious fifth to the outside, looking to pick up his cover as Beat the Drum. Then All Star partner on the rail with Jet Airway on the outside and Some Star somewhere. Snappy half, 53 and 4, 27 flat for Let's Drink On It. Let's Drink On It in front by a length and a quarter. Tell it like it is on the inside second. Here comes Sometimes Said and Corey Callahan first up to challenge. Track now by He's Watching's got that live cover. Works out the golden second over now fourth outside. Then luck be with you on the rail. And from the inside, all-star partners stride for stride with a stall, beat the drum. Then some star somewhere. And Jet Airway, three quarters, a dazzling one, 20 and four fifths. They're into the stretch drive. And it's sometimes said, looking for a huge upset here. Callahan goes to work off his cover. He's watching on the outside, a dreamy trip, and he capitalizes with the bionic man. He's watching, drawing clear. Tell it like it is, it gets to the top by the quarter pole, but then let's drink on it. He gets away third, he ends up making his bid, and he gets to the top by the half, but they go by the three quarter pole in 120 and four. It's just too much for let's drink on it. I mean, that stretch of the Meadowlands is Oh, Especially when you're like boozed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have got me ca cackling today, don't you? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, it's yeah. he's watching. You got a perfect second over trip, right? He ends up winning in 148 and 1. Sometimes said he was first up, he was second, and a luck be with you was third. All right, Cackler. Now, next, we're going to have the 10th race at the Meadowlands. And this was interesting because they put this race together originally so four-year-olds would keep racing the trotters there was a field of 14 and you see that every day don't you hello okay number 13 be a magician who's a filly going against Colts for the first time and not exactly in the, her best form she hasn't won all year after being undefeated last year was the nine to five chalk with Brian Sears number six royalty for life those credentials you know all about with Dave Miller was four to one number one you're so vain you probably think this race is about you with Ake Svenstedt seven to one third choice you're so vain with that dramatic brush in the back stretch has taken over it's Bambino Glide on the outside to challenge now second. On the inside, Creatine is third. Flanagan Memory looking golden second over here. Flips three deep right now as they get set to turn for home. Wheeling and dealing needs racing room. Be a Magician has three and a half, four to make up here and looks to swing to the outside and rally. 123 and two is three quarter time. In the stretch, Okos Fonstead. Your Sylvain has opened it up by four. Your Sylvain, the one to reel in. Incredibly, the Swedish magic continues. Your Sylvain, first start of the year since last November, comes three deep around the half, wins by two and two, five, and three. It's a mile and an eighth. Hello, how many of these races do you see? Be a magician came from way back from the 13th post to get second. Looks like she's back in fine fettle again. And Flanagan memory off at nine to one with Brett Miller got third. And Heather, big night tonight at the Meadowlands. You will be up close and personal. The live CBS Sports Network telecast is happening. Look it up on your cable provider. Find out what the station is. Yes. You excited? You psyched? Starts at nine o'clock. It's going to be a huge night. Everybody out there in social media land, the hashtag is Pace14. So get involved to get it trending and yeah it's a live telecast anything could happen there could be a um a dress blow up be a wardrobe <laughs> malfunction just oh, saying wardrobe malfunction Woo! so anyway there's a reason to tune in right there folks gonna be a big night tonight cbs sports network at the big m and for all of us here at bar this week bruce casella charlotte mcbride my lovely partner heather vitale i'm steve ross reminding you to pick up the pace just a taste and get yourself high on harness it's only natural